This lecture is about uh, how to do fast search by using inverted index. In this lecture, we're going to continue the discussion of system implementation. In particular, we're going to talk about how to support fast search by using inverted index. So let's think about uh, what a general scoring function might look like. Now, of course, uh, the vector space model is a special case of this, but we can imagine many other retrieval functions are of the same form. So the form of this function is as follows. Uh, we see this scoring function of uh, document D and the uh, query Q is defined as first a function of FA, that's adjustment function. Uh, that would uh, consider two factors that are shown here at the end, f uh, sub d of d and f sub q of uh, q. These are adjustment factors of um, a document and a query. So they are at the level of a document and a query. So, and then inside of this uh, function, we also see there's another function called edge. So this is the main part of the scoring function. And these, as I just said, are the scoring factors at the level of the whole document and the query, for example, document length. And this aggregate function would then combine all these. Now inside this H function, there are functions uh, that would compute uh, the weights of the contribution of a matched query term, ti. So this, um, this g, the function g, gives us the weight of a matched query term, ti, in document d. And this h function would then aggregate all these weights. So it will, for example, take a sum but it, uh, of all the matched query uh, terms. Uh, but it can also be a product or could be a, another way of aggregating them. And then finally, this uh, adjustment uh, function would then consider the document level or query level factors to further adjust the score, for example, document length normalization. So this general form would cover many state-of-the-art retrieval functions. Let's look at the, uh, how we can score such a, uh, score documents with such a function uh, using inverted index. So here's a general algorithm that works as follows. First, these uh, this, um, query level and document level factors can be pre-computed in the indexing time. Of course, for the query, we have to compute it at the query time. But for document, for example, document length, can be pre-computed. And then we'll maintain a score accumulator for each document D to compute the edge. And edge is aggregation function uh, over all the match query terms. Right? So how do we do that? Well, for each query term, we're going to fetch the inverted list from the inverted index. This would give us all the documents that match this query term. And that includes D1, F1, and through D and Fn. So each pair is a document ID and the frequency of the term in the document. Then for each entry, D sub J and F sub J, a particular match of the term in this particular document, D sub J, we're going to compute the function G. That would give us something like a TFIEF weight of this term. So we'll compute the weight contribution of matching this query term in this document. And then we're going to update the score accumulator for this document. And this would allow us to add this um, to an accumulator that would incrementally compute the function edge. So this uh, is basically a general way to allow us to compute all uh, functions of this form by using inverted index. Note that we don't have to touch any document that didn't match any query term. Well, this is why it's fast. We only need to process the documents that, that matched uh, at least one query term. 
In the end, then we're going to adjust the score to compute this uh, function f sub a, and then we can sort. So let's take a look at the specific example. In this case, let's assume the scoring function is a very simple one. It just takes the sum of tf, the raw tf, the count of a term in the document. Now, this simplification would help uh, showing the algorithm uh, clearly. It's very easy to extend the, the computation to include uh, other weights like transformation of TF or uh, document lens normalization or IDF weighting. So let's take a look at a specific example um, where the query is information security. And uh, I show some entries of the inverted index on the right side. Information occurred in four documents and their frequencies are also there. Security occurred in three documents. So let's see how the algorithm works. Right? So first we iterate over all the query terms and we fetch the first query term. What is that? That's information. Right? So and imagine we have all these score accumulators to store, score the, store the uh, scores for these documents. We can imagine they will be allocated, but then they will only be allocated as needed. So uh, before we uh, do any weighting of terms, we don't even need a score accumulators. But conceptually, we have these score accumulators eventually allocated. Right? So let's fetch the, the entries from the inventory uh, list for information first. That's the first one. So these score accumulators obviously will be initialized as zeros. So the first entry is D1 and 3. 3 is the occurrences of information in this document. Since our scoring function assumes that the score is just a sum of these raw counts, we just need to add a 3 to the score accumulator to account for the increase of score due to matching this term information in document D1. And then we go to the next entry, that's D2 and 4, and then we add a 4 to the score accumulator of D2. Of course, at this point, we will allocate the score accumulator as needed. And so at this point, we allocate D1 and D2. And the next is D3, and we add one, uh, we allocate another score accumulator for D3 and add one to it. And then finally, D4 uh, gets a 5 because uh, the information uh, the term information occurred twice, uh, in five times in this document. Okay, so this completes the processing of all the entries in the inverted index for information. It processed all the contributions of matching information in these four documents. So now uh, our algorithm will go to the next query term, that's security. So we're going to fetch all the inverted index entries for security. So in this case, there are three entries, and we're going to go uh, through each of them. The first is D2 and 3, and that means security occurred three times in D2. And what do we do? Well, we do exactly the same as what we did for information. So this time we're going to change uh, the score accumulated D2 since it's already allocated. And what we do is to add a 3 to the existing value, which is a 4. So we now get a 7 for D2. D2 the score is increased because it matched both the information and the security. Go to the next uh, entry, that's D4 and 1. So we would update the score for D4. And again, we add 1 to uh, D4. So D4 now goes from 5 to 6. Finally, we process D5 and 3. Since we have not yet allocated a score accumulated for D5, at this point, we're going to allocate 1 for D5. And we're going to add 3 to it. So those uh, scores on the last row are the final scores for these documents. If our scoring function is just a, a simple sum of uh, TF values. Now, what if we uh, actually uh, would like to do length normalization? Well, we can do the normalization at this point for each document. So to summarize this, right, so you can see we first process the, the information um, the term query term information and we process all the uh, entries in the inverted index for this term. Then we process the security. Uh, it's worth thinking about the, uh, what should be the order of processing here when we consider query terms. Uh, it might make difference, especially if we don't want to uh, 
uh, uh, to keep all the score accumulated. Let's say we only want to keep the most promising score accumulators. What do you think would be a good order to go through? Would you go? Um, would you process a common term first, or would you process a rare term first? The answer is uh, we should go to uh, we should process the rare term first. A rare term would match fewer documents, and then the score contribution would be higher because the IDF value would be higher, and and then uh, it allows us to touch the most promising documents first. So it helps pruning some non-promising ones if we don't need so many documents to be returned to the user. Right? So those are all heuristics for further improving the accuracy. Here you can also see how we can incorporate the IDF weighting. Right? So they can easily then be incorporated when we process each query term. When we fetch the inverted index, we can fetch the document frequency, and then we can compute the IDF. Or maybe perhaps the IDF value has already been pre-computed when we index the documents. At that time, we already computed uh, the IDF value, then we can just fetch it. So all these can be uh, done uh, at this time. So that would mean when we process all the entries for information, these, uh, these weights will be adjusted by the same IDF, uh, which is the IDF for information. So this is the basic idea of using inverted index for fast search, and it works well for uh, all kinds of formulas that are of the general form, and this uh, generally uh, the general form covers actually most uh, state of the art retrieval functions. So there are some tricks to further improve the efficiency. Uh, some general um, technique uh, techniques uh, include uh, caching. This is just the uh, store some results of popular queries so that next time. When you see the same query, you simply return the stored results. Similarly, you can also store the list of inverted index in the memory uh, for a popular term. And if the query term is popular, likely you will soon need to fetch the inverted index for the same term again. So keeping it in the memory would help. And these are general techniques for improving efficiency. We can also keep only the most promising accu accumulators because a user generally doesn't want to examine so many documents. We only need to return a uh, high quality subset of documents that uh, likely are ranked on the top. In, in, uh, for that purpose, we can then prune the accumulators. We don't have to store all the accumulators. At some point, we just keep the uh, highest value accumulators. Another um, technique is to do parallel processing, and that's needed for uh, really uh, processing uh, such a large data set like uh, the web data set. And to scale up to the web scale, we need to, special, um, to have special techniques to do parallel processing and to distribute the storage of files on multiple machines. So here, uh, as a, here's a list of some uh, text retrieval toolkits. It's not a complete list. You can find uh, more information at this URL on the bottom. Uh, here I listed the four here. Lucene is one of the most popular uh, toolkits that uh, can support a lot of applications. And it has very nice support for applications. You can use it to build a search engine application very quickly. The downside is that it's not that easy to extend it and uh, the algorithms implemented there are also not the most advanced algorithms. Lima or Inji is another toolkit that, um, that, that does not have such a nice support uh, of application as Lucene, but it has many advanced uh, search algorithms, and it's also easy to extend. Terrier is yet another toolkit that also uh, has good support for application capability and some uh, advanced algorithms. So that's... Um, maybe uh, in between Lima or Lucene, or maybe uh, rather uh, combining the strengths of both. So that's uh, also a useful toolkit. Uh, Meta is a toolkit that we will use for uh, the program assignment. And this is a new toolkit that has uh, a combination of both text retrieval algorithms and the text mining algorithms. And so topic models are implemented there, and there are uh, a number of text analysis algorithms uh, implemented in the toolkit. Uh, 
as well as uh, basic search algorithms. So to summarize all the discussion about the system implementation, uh, here are the major takeaway uh, points. Uh, inverted index is the primary data structure for uh, supporting a search engine. Uh, that's the key to enable fast response to a user's query. And the basic idea is to process, uh, pre-process the data as much as we can, and we want to do compression when appropriate, so that we can save disk space and can um, speed up uh, I.O. and uh, processing of inverted index in general. We talked about how to construct the inverted index when the data can fit into the memory. And then we talked about the uh, uh, fast search using inverted index, basically to exploit the inverted index to accumulate the scores for documents matching or query term. And we exploit the zip law to avoid touching many documents that don't match any query term. And this algorithm can actually support a wide range of ranking algorithms. So these basic techniques have, um, have great potential for further scaling up uh, using distributed file system, parallel processing, and caching. Here are two uh, additional readings that uh, you can take a look if you have time and you're interested in knowing more about this. The first one is a classic textbook on uh, the, uh, the efficiency of um, inverted index and the compression techniques and how to uh, in general, build an efficient search engine in terms of the space, overhead, and speed. And the second one is a newer textbook that has a nice discussion of implementing and evaluating search engines. Mm -hmm.